my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I am wearing one of my fancy booktube hats, and today, gosh, I was all prepared to sit down and film either one of two different wrap-ups or a series review, and then my brain was like, no, I, I don't feel like doing any of this. All I feel like filming is a book haul. So this is a book haul. Um, maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll film something of more intellectual substance. Anyways, I have not filmed a book haul since my massive spring book haul, which I think covered all the way through May. So then this is June through October. I did also buy a bunch of books in November, but I have those set aside to be a different book haul to be filmed later for reasons. I have got several stacks of books to show you here. The one that I was holding up in the thumbnail is all of my pre-orders from these months because I think there were two different rounds of that Barnes & Noble pre-order sale that they do occasionally uh, where I placed pre-orders for books that were released in this time period. So I'm going to show you those first and then I'm going to move on to other things. First, these are predictable, these are not surprising. Heaven Officials Blessing Volumes 3 and 4. I am buying these as they are released in official English translation. I read the fan translation of this web novel before this was officially licensed in English. I have no plans to reread them anytime soon, but I am buying them as they are released. And then the rest of these are things that I am very excited to hopefully read in the near future. The first is The Path of Thorns by A.G. Slater. This is a pen name for Angela Slater. Uh, this is another sort of dark gothic fantasy fairy tale novel in the same vein as All the Murmuring Bones. I think this is another one that takes place in the same shared world as a lot of her previous fiction, but as far as I know you don't need to read anything else before you pick up this. This is one that I was sort of imagining I would read in October for Halloween and then I forgot that I had it because it was sitting in the stack of things that I needed to like film a book haul for, and so it wasn't on my shelves when I picked out an October read. But this one is still a priority for me. And then I did pre-order both of the relatively high-profile uh, sci-fi murder mystery in space books that came out within um, relatively short window of each other. Those are Station Eternity by Mer Lafferty and The Spare Man by Mary Robinette Kowal. I really want to read a sort of fun, genre-savvy sci-fi murder mystery in space. I was not sure which one of these would be more my cup of tea, so I ordered them both. And I will read one or the other, maybe both, see which one strikes my fancy. If this turns out to be like a new genre trend, I will be happy because this seems very fun. And then the last pre-order of this batch is Lonely Castle in the Mirror. This is by Mizuki Tsujimura and uh, the English translation is by Philip Gabriel. This is a Japanese novel that was originally published in Japan and I think 2017. And I believe this English translation was first published in the UK last year, and then this year Erwan Books in the US uh, published it here. It is a fantasy novel, and I've seen such like sort of wildly different descriptions about it that I'm, I'm sort of hesitant to try to characterize it without reading it, but I I think I'm pretty sure that this is about a group of students who meet each other in this magical castle of some sort that the protagonist gets to by traveling through a mirror. I have a stack of other newer releases that I purchased in these months that I want to show you. First is 
Osmo Unknown and The Eight Penny Woods by Catherine M. Valenti. Another one that I sort of thought I might read as a Halloween book, but it was in the stack of books for this book haul, and so I didn't think of it when Halloween came. I think this is a sort of whimsical quest to a land of the dead type story. It is middle grade, a new middle grade fantasy novel from Valenti is always an absolute must read for me. Next is A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. This is the sequel to A Psalm for the Wild Belt, the wildly acclaimed Hugo Award winning novella from last year. Um, I'm sure many people have gotten around to reading this before I have, but I do own a copy, so it is on the TBR. And then another novella. This is The Language of Roses by Heather Rose Jones. This I bought directly from the publisher which is Queen of Swords Press. Um, this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and I believe it has a protagonist who's either asexual or aromantic, and I can't remember which. Um, but this is another one that I am maybe planning on reading this month, depends on my mood. And then next is something that's very exciting for me because this is a series where I actually got up the courage and requested review copies from the publisher and I did not hear back from them for a long time until after the entire trilogy had already been released and then they got back to me and asked me if I still wanted them and I was like yes. So this is the Regency fairy tale series by Olivia Atwater. These were originally self-published and this year they have all been re-released from Orbit, the first book is Half a Soul, the second book is 10,000 Stitches, and the third book is Long Shadow. These are all fantasy of manners, regency romance type books. This is my escapism genre. <laughs> I recently finished reading the entire Stariel series by A.J. Lancaster, including the new book that is a spin-off, and I am hoping that this is going to be the series that's going to fill that void for me now that there are no more of those books. I'm hoping this will be a trilogy that I'll want to sort of binge pretty quickly and then get a series review out. That is something I would like to do. I would like to be doing more series reviews. The next stack of books I have here are the things that I bought on my trip to Worldcon in Chicago. That was end of August, beginning of September. This stack includes one airport bookstore purchase and four things that I bought in the dealer's room. I did a TikTok video haul showing everything that I bought in the dealer's room in addition to just books. I can link that below if you're curious what else I bought at the convention. The book I bought at the airport when my flight was delayed was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sungu Mandana. I did start reading this on the airplane. It was a perfectly decent travel read. I ended up giving it three stars. It's a sort of cozy contemporary witchy book. Then the first of the books that I bought in the dealer's room at the convention is Ars Historica by Marie Brennan. This is a collection of historical fantasy short stories. I think there are seven stories in this. Um, this is either, uh, either self-published or like very, very small press. It's very, very short. I've read at least one, probably a couple of Marie Brennan's short stories before, um, but I don't think I've read any of the ones that are collected in this book. The rest of the books that I bought were used books. These are all vintage hardcovers. There are three of them. The first two are two books in a series by Jane Yolen. The first is Sister Light, Sister Dark, and the sequel is White Jenna. These are the first two books in a sort of mythic 
fantasy series. There is a third book. Um, from what I can tell, the third book was published sometime after the first two, and these two were originally meant to be a duology. I think this series is called The Books of Great Alta. I have already read the first book. I buddy read this with my friend Maya from Maya Reads. I will link her channel. I think we both gave it three stars. There's a lot I admire in Jane Yolen's writing, but it tends to kind of keep me at a bit of a remove, and I think that was almost more true of this book than anything else of hers I've read. These were published in the 80s though, and it sort of helps fill in uh, that genre history for me of the, the types of fantasy fiction that I'm particularly interested in, mythic and, and fairy tale based fantasy particularly. Also, I think both of these are first editions and I got a really good bargain for these books and the third one. The third one I got is another fantasy novel from the 80s. This is Chains of Gold by Nancy Springer. I think this is a standalone, but I really don't know anything about it other than it's a fantasy novel. Nancy Springer is nowadays, I guess, best known for the Enola Holmes books, um, but she has been a very prolific fantasy author uh, over the course of her career. The one book of hers that I've read and reviewed on this channel uh, is The Audling Prince, which was published in 2018, and that book had the feel of a more vintage-y fantasy novel to me, despite having been recently published. Um, so I am curious what her actual older fantasy novels are like. And then my last three books I have to show you in this video are all uh, books that I bought used from used bookstores. The first is a book that I've sort of had my eye out for in used bookstores for a while if I found it at a, a really good bargain price, and I did, and I bought it. This is Moresi by Maria Turcheninoff. It's the first book in, I think this series is called The Red Abbey Chronicles. It is a YA series. I know this book is in translation. It was originally published in Finnish, um, but I'm not seeing the translator credited anywhere that's super easy for me to find. I have heard dramatically mixed things ab about this book, like all across the board. So this is one that's been on my radar for a number of years. It's not particularly a priority for me to pick up, but it's something I'm curious about and for four dollars I bought it. My next used book purchase is one that I was actually planning on buying new because it's a, a, a relatively recent release. Um, and I saw a used copy instead, and I bought it. And this is volume 11 of The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe, which is uh, the final volume of this manga series. I kept up with this series as it was released in English pretty well through like volume 6, and then I have not read beyond volume 6, but I now have the whole rest of the series, 7 through 11 whenever I feel like it. And then the final used bookstore purchase is the sort of thing that I bought because it was only one dollar, and it's more the type of book that I will have on my shelf for reference, as opposed to something I would plan on reading cover to cover. Um, this is a collection of Russian fairy tales, creatively entitled Russian Fairy Tales, collected by Alexander Afanasev. I don't know about that pronunciation. The translation is by Norbert Guterman, illustrated by Alexander Alexiev. Um, this is from the Pantheon Fairy Tale and Folklore Library, published in what year? Copyright 1945. This thing is massive. It has so many stories. So basically, I, I want to have this so that if I, I see a certain fairy tale referenced, I can look it up and read it. So again, this is going sort of on the reference shelf as opposed to the TBR shelf. Um, that is it. That is my big book haul for June through October. And if I find I missed anything, I will just slip it into my November book haul. <laughs> whenever I film that, and uh, you will never know. Anyhow, I hope you're having a very good day. I hope to have some of those wrap-ups for you sooner rather than later. 
that is all. Bye for now.